Hey Canucks fans, it's Sunday. That means it's time for another installment of Ask Me Anything. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. So this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, July the 12th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Because it's Sunday, don't forget, tonight is my weekly live stream. I invite you to join me at 10 o'clock on YouTube a chance to talk about the Canucks, talk about phase three, phase four, return to play, CBA, COVID, opting out, whatever you want to talk about, a chance to check in with each other. So please join me tonight at 10 p.m. on YouTube again for my weekly live stream. For today's video, I would love to film outside, but there's too much going on, people cutting their lawn, neighbors being loud, and I'm taking a break from my ping pong exploits, which I'll get to at the end of this video to bring you this weekly Ask Me Anything. We have eight or nine questions that are really, really good, so I'm gonna get to them, half of them from YouTube and half of them from Twitter. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions for me to consider answering today. First, a few from YouTube. Daniel Hammond says this, did the NHL pick a Calder Trophy winner yet? Do you think that Canucks sometime in the next four or more years will sign Jack Hughes, or do you think he'll stay in New Jersey? And do you think the Canucks will beat the Wild? Okay, I'll do the easy one first. Yes, I do think the Canucks will beat the Wild in four or five. I like the Canucks offense and their goaltending. I know Minnesota's got a better D, a defense, blue line. It might be too, simplicity to, uh, too simple to think it's just because the Canucks have better offense, better goaltending, doesn't mean they're gonna win. But I just have a feeling, you know, I'm sure Minnesota fans are saying the same thing, but as a optimistic and positive and good looking Canucks fan, I'm going with the Canucks to win in four. So that's my prediction. Did they pick a Calder Trophy winner yet? Uh, the voting, um, all the votes are in. They're gonna announce probably the finalists today or tomorrow as they release one a week. Uh, sorry, one a day, and then they're actually going to name the winners later in the summer. I think it's during the conference finals, so that would be actually in September sometime. So yes, they voted. Uh, they will announce the three finalists in the next couple days, or maybe even today. I know it's sometime this week, and then they'll announce the winners in September as part, part of the conference finals. And do you think that Canucks sometime in the next four or more years will sign Jack Hughes, or do you think he'll stay in New Jersey? No, I think uh, Hughes will stay in New Jersey for a little while, because remember, technically a team's got the first six years of, of a player under their contract, right? Three year entry level deal, then they can do, they can already sign long term, or a lot of the guys will sign a three year bridge deal. So I think Jack Hughes is good for at least six years in New Jersey, and then they'll do everything they can to retain him, obviously after that. It's very rare, but it's not, uh, it's not impossible, but it's rare for a number one draft pick to uh, go somewhere else, um, and at least not do his third contract, or at least the, the, uh, the first, um, you know, the, the contract that goes around the seven year mark in your, with the team that you drafted them. So as much as it'd be nice to see Quinn and Jack together, I don't think that that's gonna happen. That's not, uh, and I think anyone speculating um, that that could happen, I, I think, uh, I don't know, I, I'm just, I just don't buy it yet. But come back to me in four or five years for sure. Thanks Daniel for that question. Steph Cron uh, comments a lot of my YouTube videos. I appreciate that. Steph says, do you think Demko will be a Canuck at the start of the 2021 2022 season? Obviously, that question has to do with the Seattle expansion draft that will happen after next season, but before the 2021-2022 season. And I've laid out um, scenarios where I think that Demko might be um, untouched, where there are other some really uh, uh, good goaltenders throughout the league. Are there three others that are better than Demko that Seattle would take first? or maybe they want one veteran and two young guys. Who knows what they're gonna do? There's things that the Canucks can do to, to you know, try and dissuade Seattle from picking, um, picking Thatcher Demko, whether it be exposing other players, or whether it be working on a side deal. Steph, to answer your question though, do I think Demko will still be a Canuck? My, my answer is no, especially if everything I've been hearing uh, from good sources saying that the Canucks really wanna sign Jacob Markstrom, are making him the priority as their UFA signing for the, and if that's anything past a four, you know, three, four or five year contract, then um, they'll probably be able to want to trade Demko for assets, maybe recoup some picks, recoup some prospects, some things that the Canucks have been trading away over the past two or three years. I love Demko. I've talked about him a lot on this channel. The fact that the Canucks had, maybe they still have Luongo type hopes for, uh, for Demko, but if Markstrom is indeed the priority, you can't sink up that much money because Demko's getting a new, new contract pretty soon as well. So um, if I was a betting man, I would say no. I don't think he's a Canuck to start the 2021, 20, 2022 season, but I'd love for the Canucks to make it happen because I think he's a good goaltender, will be a good goaltender. He's the natural successor to Jacob Markstrom, 
but how long is he willing to wait behind Markstrom? Justin says, will the games, hockey games be on TV? And he says, um, how can I watch in the States? Are you going to watch all the games or only Canucks? What if you're working? Okay, <laughs> a lot of questions there. Um, Justin, also, thank you. I know you, you um, comment a lot of my videos, often the first one. To answer two of the four, um, I'm going to watch all the Canucks games for sure and do post-game live streams. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to watch all the games. I simply won't be able to because uh, on weekdays I'll be working. So that's going to be tough and I don't have that week off. So that answers the bottom two. But I'll definitely watch all the Canucks games and probably catch a lot of the other games, especially during non-work hours. As opposed to, I mean, regarding watching the States, I know that NBC has the rights overall in the States. I've heard of Sling TV. I've heard of NHL.TV. I've heard of NHL.com. So you're going to have to look into your own cable package or there's other non-cable ways to stream the games. Some of them cost money, of course. Some of them are illegal, which I will not uh, condone. So Justin, that's really up to you. But the cool thing is, I know NHL.TV, I'm not sure what the cost is, but they black out local games. But the fact that you're in Texas, but you're, I think, a Vancouver Canucks fan, the only games that might be blacked out will be the Dallas Stars game. So if you can get around that, I can't remember if you're a big Dallas Stars fan as well as a Vancouver Canucks fan. If you can get around that, then maybe NHL.TV is the way to go. But simply Google it. I know that's what I did before I answered this question. So um, check it out. But there's a lot of streaming services for sure. Maestro asks, will we see a goalie go number one in the draft? Not for a while. Um, I don't know prospects that well, though. So there might be some young, young guy coming up that's really, really good. I haven't heard of him, if so. And the last time a goalie was drafted number one was Mark andre Fleury back in 2003 by Pittsburgh. And then the time before that was Rick DiPietro by the New York Islanders in 2000. But then before him, you have to go all the way back to 1968. So 68, 32. In 52 years, there's only been two goalies drafted number one overall. So I don't see why that would change. Or maybe some would say we are due for that. But no, I don't see a goalie going number one for a while, at least not this year and maybe not for the next few years because I haven't heard much. Again, we haven't had one since uh, uh, Marc-Andre Fleury back in 2003. Okay, gonna use this next question to straddle from YouTube to Twitter questions. Uhex on YouTube says, could you see Besser being traded? And then ask a few other questions, which I'll, actually I'll ask all Uhex questions. Could you see Besser being traded? Do you think it would be a big mistake if the Canucks ended up doing so? Would you rather keep Besser and get rid of Toffoli and or Markstrom? And then Ginger Canuck, uh, my good friend Jordan at the Ginger Canuck on Twitter also asked, although I don't want him to be traded like at all, what would be a starting point return that you would even consider for Besser? So I'm going to combine my answer, um, uh, these two questions into my answer to both UHEX and Ginger Canuck. Could I see Besser getting traded? Yes, I could. And that was even before all these reports from Matt Sakaris came out this week. Do I want him to get traded? No, I like him a lot. And I think the Canucks can do other things within their, their team to make the salary work. I, I really believe that. Do I think it would be a big mistake if the Canucks did so? UHEX, that depends on the return, which I'll get to right now because Ginger Canuck then asked, uh, what would be a starting point return? So it, I don't believe in, I've heard a couple people think that, talk about Besser being a sweetener, uh, you know, an add-on to a trade. No, I think Besser would be the primary part of a trade but I can understand the theory in that uh, he would be a very, very valuable sweetener. But let's talk about Brock Besser as the primary part of a trade. I think you need a top four D-man back, whether it's right side or left side. We know the Canucks are a lot weaker on the right side, and maybe a pick or a prospect. And then when you look at Besser's salary, just south of $6 million, if you get a top four D-man for three or four million, or even four to four and a half million, then maybe to even it out, at least from a salary perspective, then you get a pick or a prospect back. So that's... Uh, Jordan, that's what I would say the, the starting point for a trade for Besser is it would be a top four D-man plus a pick or prospect. That's what I would look at. I wouldn't go one for one Besser for a D-man. Maybe I'm being greedy, but I think you need a second piece in there to make it work. So that's the, be a starting point return. Top four D plus a pick or prospect. And then to answer UHEX's last question, would you rather keep Besser and get rid of Toffoli and or Markstrom? So the, the way the question is worded is a little bit confusing, but... Um, I like Besser over Toffoli because Besser is younger. They're going to be making about the same thing. I'm sure Toffoli will make, uh, will want about five or five and a half million. Toffoli is a lot older than Besser. Um, so I do like Besser and it's not just because we drafted him. Toffoli, uh, as much as, he, as good as he is, and I've been saying I want him to be a, a priority. Um, I, I would hate to sign Toffoli to a five or six year contract and then have him tail off after two or three years. And then we're like, oh, for the past, for the last two or three years, we're like, oh, this is a little expensive to pay him. I hope that doesn't happen, but that could happen with Toffoli. 
but um, I, I'm not wishing that it happens, obviously, but that could happen. So I'd, I'd, keep, I'd rather keep Besser over to Foley, younger, um, all those things. Uh, we drafted him. And it says, and get rid of Tavoli and or Markstrom. No, so as much as I like Demko, um, I'm not sure that the Canucks are as competitive with Demko in the net. So I would, you know, of those three, no one's ever talked about Besser, Tofoli, or Markstrom, but I would take Markstrom and Besser over Markstrom and Tofoli. but I really want Tofoli back. I basically want all three. I'm kind of greedy, so I hope that makes sense. Um, on Staying on Twitter, JL, my hockey roller hockey buddy, um, Escape Reality, says this, Without crowd noise, will we be hearing a lot more colorful language from the players during TV broadcasts? Yeah, I have two thoughts on this. One of them is if they don't go with any tape delay at all uh, and no censoring, yeah, we're going to hear a lot more colorful language and maybe the, the NHL puts a disclaimer, you know, um, this program is not suitable for all viewers, viewer discretion is advised, something they usually put up before wrestling or boxing or something. That could be it, um, depending, and we're hearing a lot that they want different camera angles, they want to be creative, they want to make it a, a truly TV viewer experience as opposed to someone in the crowd because there's no one going to be in the crowd, right? So they want to make it as authentic and as, as unique and creative as they can, as appealing as they can for TV viewers. So maybe that means running the risk of more colorful language or they put on a three, five, seven second delay, whatever it is, no matter how fast the, the guy working the controls is. And then, yeah, they're not, you're not live by three or five seconds, but at least you can bleep out anything. So I could see them going one or two ways, but yes, Without a doubt, I, the players aren't going to change their culture. They're not going to they're not going to change the way they talk trash or the way they celebrate. Sometimes it's good swearing, right? You know, f yeah or whatever after they score. Let's let's f and go. I you know I don't say those kind of words, but I know that's what they say. So um, yes, we will be hearing more colorful language. It just depends on if we're hearing it live or if we're hearing it bleeped out, which we can then infer or imply what they are saying. Great question, Justin. Uh, Justin Miner on. Twitter. He's got a good YouTube channel as well. He says it, he's at um, Ski Miner 36. He says, who is your favorite Yinzer? And I remember when Justin first said this to me about two years ago, I had to ask him what Yinzer meant. And he said, it's someone from Pittsburgh because he's from Pittsburgh. He vlogs about the Penguins. So if I had to pick one favorite person from Pittsburgh, not necessarily playing on the Pittsburgh Penguins, because I don't think that counts as a Yinzer, right? You got to be born and raised in Pittsburgh. Then I'm going with wrestling legend, Kurt Angle. It's true. Is damn true. Yeah, that's that's my favorite Yenzer would be Kurt Angle. So I hope that satisfies uh, you, Justin. Blue Collar Brigade, a beauty in his own right, at Blue Collar Brigade, asks this, says, does Messier suck? Hashtag Messier sucks. So I think you answered your own question, Jay, in there. But yes, uh, Messier does suck. And it still drives me crazy to think that we brought him in, pay him so much money, he, he disrupts the locker room of the team, and we had a team when he came that had Bire, Mogilny, Linden, all in their late 20s, mid to late 20s, and we sucked. We didn't make the playoffs. So um, what a waste of a, a three-year tenure there. So, um, you know, I don't hate Messi, but I, I do recognize that the negative impact. I'm sure there's some positive things in there as well, but I, I see a lot of the negatives for sure. And the biggest one, a lot of money <clears throat> for no results. So, yes, um, Messi does suck. And then lastly, the cranky Yankee. At Cranky Yankee 88 says, how's the ping pong game shaping up? Been practicing? So you've seen, I posted both on my Twitter and Instagram and Facebook that we bought a new ping pong tabletop after playing inside on a smaller table. Now it's a full size nine by six table. It is huge, nine by five, nine by six, whatever, it's nine by something. It is massive and I'm easily the third best between Sean and Jacob and me. Sean and Jacob are quite equal. They, they win 50-50 they when they play against each other. I will win one out of 10, 20 games against them. They, um, they have good speed, they have good agility, and they have really good forehand smashes where I, I'm more of a spin control guy. And if the wind's going wreaking havoc or if I'm not able to return a lot of their shots, then you can see why it's hard for me to win um, matches against them. So my ping pong game is getting better, but it's nowhere close to Sean and Jacob. But as soon as I post this, I'm gonna go back out there because we have a full day of ping pong uh, to, to play. And it's really fun. You know, one thing I got, I think I, I really gotta work on my smash defense because oftentimes they will smash it on the forehand and instead of me reacting to it, I'll just kind of let the, the ball hit me. Sometimes up here, sometimes in my nether regions. Not the best strategy because it's never gonna go back over the net after hitting my body because I think you're supposed to use your paddle for those returns. So I'm gonna practice. Maybe I'll give you an update every week. So there we go. Thank you for the great questions. Everything from Canucks to Calder Trophy to free agents 
to, um, you know, to broadcasting and so on and so forth. A lot of great questions there. I hope I answered them, them to your satisfaction. And I hope that you enjoy me tonight at 10 p.m. for my weekly YouTube live stream where we can talk about more of these things or have ans you can ask me new questions as well. So I look forward to chatting with you then. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, like this video if you want to, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day, enjoy the sun, God bless, and go Canucks go.